Welcome back to The Deep Dive, where we deliver the shortcut to being well-informed. Today, we are tackling a really fascinating one, a ticker that just screams technological ambition. QuantumScape, uh, QS on the NYSE, we've gone through a massive stack of sources on this company. We're analyzing everything based on the market close, October 7th, 2025. Stock closed at $15.56. And here's the big question we're trying to answer today. What if this whole holy grail idea for EV batteries, you know, charging a minute, it's not catching fire, what if that's actually solved? Is this company, QuantumScape, with its, what, $9 billion market cap but zero commercial revenue, is it the next Tesla? Or are we looking at billions bet on a, well, a really cool science experiment. Yeah, it's a classic market contradiction, isn't it? And today, we're really gonna dig into that massive disconnect. We'll definitely look at the incredible technology, the science that's driving that stock price and all the hype. But crucially, we also have to look at the financials, the models that are frankly pretty skeptical. We'll get into some conservative valuation models later suggesting the intrinsic value, well, factoring in the huge risks. Yeah. There might be way lower, speculatively, maybe between $7 and $10 a share. Wow. At that gap, $15.56 yeah. versus maybe 7 to $10. That's where all the action is. Let's unpack yeah. it. All right, let's do it. Let's lay the groundwork first. Start with the business itself, the science behind it all. We begin with Chapter 1, Business Understanding. So, okay, at its core, QuantumScape, their pre-revenue development stage focused on innovation. Wrong. And key point, no. they're going for a capital light strategy. They're not trying to be the next gigafactory builder. Exactly. And that shapes everything. Their business model basically has two parts. First, there is near-term income from what they call development services. Like consulting. Kind of, yeah. Think of it as custom engineering work for partners, like Volkswagen's battery unit, PowerCo. They build them for the work needed to integrate QuantumScape's tech into actual cars. For instance, they're expecting over $10 million from PowerCo for work they've already done. Okay, so that's some cash flow at least. Some, yeah. But the real prize... The thing that justifies that $9 billion valuation in investors' eyes is the second stream, royalties and licensing. Their big vision is to be the Intel inside for next-gen EV batteries. Right. They license out their patented tech, collect those recurring, hopefully high margin payments, and they don't have to spend billions building factories all over the world. Makes sense. But that licensing model depends entirely on the tech breakthrough itself, right? The QSE5 battery cell. Yeah. This isn't just tweaking lithium ion, is it? It's fundamentally different. Oh, completely. They're replacing the uh, the flammable liquid or gel electrolyte and the separator, replacing it with a solid, non-combustible ceramic separator. Just that sounds like a huge safety win. It is. A massive safety improvement. And that solid ceramic piece is what allows the really revolutionary part, the anode list design. Explain that anode list bit again. Okay, so traditional batteries, they have this graphite anode put in during manufacturing. It adds weight, limits charge speed, QuantumScape gets rid of it. Instead, the anode, made of pure lithium metal, forms in situ. Meaning? Inside the battery. Exactly. Inside the battery structure the very first time you charge it up. Why is that such a big deal? Because pure lithium metal. Mm. It's notoriously difficult and dangerous to handle in manufacturing. Highly reactive stuff. By forming it inside the battery, you sidestep all those manufacturing challenges and safety risks of handling pure lithium externally. And that innovation is what unlocks these four big promises, what makes it a no-compromise battery, as they say. Okay, let's recap those four pillars for everyone listening. Sure. Pillar one, higher energy density. Get rid of the heavy graphite anode. You pack more energy in the same space. Their prototype hit 844 watt-hours per liter. Meaning longer range for EVs. Right. Longer range. Pillar two, faster charging. That anode-less design helps eliminate bottlenecks. They're targeting 10% to 80% charge in under 15 minutes. Wow. Huge. Pillar three, enhanced safety. We mentioned the non-flammable ceramic. That's key. And pillar four, longer cycle life. Their prototypes are showing good capacity retention even after 800 charge cycles. Okay, those four pillars sound amazing. Mm -hmm. But the big but. Yeah. Can they actually build these things yeah. cheaply at massive scale? That ceramic separator sounds like the key challenge. It absolutely is the challenge. They've developed this proprietary manufacturing process called Cobra, supposedly boosts separator productivity by 25 times. Okay. But the really smart move, I think, is their partnership strategy. First, having Volkswagen Power Co. on board gives them technical validation and, crucially, a path to market, a guaranteed first customer, essentially. Mm -hmm. But even bigger news, maybe, is their recent agreement with Corning, Inc. Corning, the glass people. The glass and advanced ceramics people, yeah. World leaders. 
They're co-developing the separator manufacturing process with QuantumScape. They're basically outsourcing this massive engineering challenge, making flawless thin film ceramics at scale to arguably the best company in the world to do it. Wow. That's, that's actually a really big deal. Take some risk off the table, potentially. It's a huge de-risking move. Shows confidence, too. All right, makes sense. Now let's pivot to the people running this show. Who's behind this ambitious plan? Let's talk chapter two, management <laughs> evaluation, the leadership team. Yes. It seems like they have a very specific background. Dr. Siva Sivaram became CEO in early 2024. His background is decades in semiconductors, data sag, places like Western Digital, Intel. Why is that the relevant experience for a battery company? Isn't it more about chemistry? That's a really good question, and it gets to the heart of their strategy. Yes, the chemistry is vital. But the manufacturing challenge here, it isn't like making traditional car parts, making that super thin, absolutely flawless ceramic separator consistently at high volume. It's actually much more like making microchips or semiconductor wafers than it is like bending metal for a car body. Ah, okay. Thin film precision manufacturing. Exactly. So Sivaram's deep experience in high volume, low defect, thin film manufacturing that's precisely what QuantumScape needs right now to crack the code on scaling up. Got it. And the board seems to reflect that auto connection, too. Yeah. VW executives are on there, and notably, J.B. Straubel. Yeah, Tesla co-founder and former CTO. Having him involved brings serious auto industry credibility and experience navigating that path from lab tech to mass market vehicles. Ensures alignment. Right. And their whole strategy follows from this tech focus. Almost all their money, like $101 million in R&D just in Q2 2025, goes into the tech and scaling it up. They're growing organically. No M&A chatter here. And metrics like return on invested capital, they're obviously negative now. Of course. The whole bet, the entire investment case, rests on the idea that this focused R&D spend will eventually lead to extremely high returns, mostly from that licensing model justifying today's big valuation. Which brings us squarely to the financials, which, as you said, look That's good, yeah. unusual. Let's dive into Chapter 3, Financial Analysis. Okay, the numbers. Market cap, $9 billion dollars based entirely on hope pretty much yeah pure optimism about the future because the current reality is zero revenue significant cash burn their adjusted ebitda loss was 63 million dollars in q2 2025 alone and wall street doesn't expect profits anytime soon maybe 2028 at the earliest that's the consensus yeah losses for the foreseeable future yeah. but and this is the astonishing part look at their balance sheet it's a fortress their debt to equity ratio is incredibly low, 0 0.03. Meaning almost no debt. Exactly. Funded almost entirely by selling stock, by equity. They owe practically nothing. And their liquidity. I saw the current ratio. It's kind of nuts. It really is. 16.4. That means they have over $16 in cash and easily sellable assets for every $1 they owe in the short term. They're drowning in cash. They are swimming in it. Management says this cash pile gives them a runway stretching well into 2029. So they have time. Time to solve the engineering problems. Immense time, financially speaking. Okay, so traditional metrics like P.E. Useless here. No earnings. Right. So we look at something like price to book ratio, PB, and it's high, right? 8.7. Very high. It shows the market is valuing their intellectual property, their patents, their future growth potential at almost nine times the actual accounting value of their assets. Yeah. It's all about the IP. Which loops back to trying to figure out what this thing is actually worth speculatively, the DCF model you mentioned earlier. Right. So if you try to build a 10-year discounted cash flow model, you have to make a lot of assumptions. Let's assume revenues from licensing start ramping up, say, 2026, 2027. Assume a pretty high free cash flow margin eventually, like 20, 25%, because licensing can be high margin. But then you have to account for the massive risk, the execution risk. So you use a very high discount rate. We use 18% in our speculative model. 18%, that sounds really high like punishably high. It is. It's extremely aggressive. It reflects a very high probability baked in that things could go wrong or get significantly delayed. It's how conservative finance folks quantify massive uncertainty. And when you run the numbers with that 18% discount rate. It spits out a speculative intrinsic value estimate somewhere in the range of $7 to $10 per share. Okay. So $7 to $10 versus the current price of $15.56. Exactly. That gap. That's the story. The market price holds all the optimism. The conservative valuation holds all the skepticism about execution. And that massive disconnect is what we need to explore further. Let's move into part two. Market sentiment, ownership, risk, and conclusion. Starting with chapter four, market sentiment. And this is where it gets really interesting, this Wall Street versus Main Street thing. 
The stock itself has had incredible momentum, trading way above its 50-day, 200-day moving averages. Huge gains in 2025, over 200% year-to-date when we checked. Retail investors seem excited. They do, but the professional analyst community, yeah. decidedly bearish. It's a stark contrast. The consensus rating from analysts covering the stock is consistently reduce or even sell. And their price targets. Way down. The average target is somewhere between $6.22 and $6.36. Wow. That's more than 60% below where the stock is trading now. Exactly. It signals a fundamental disagreement. The pros seem deeply skeptical about the timeline and the execution. They see huge hurdles ahead. And that skepticism shows up in the short interest too, right? Yep. High short interest. Around 12.2% to 12.9% of the available shares, the float, are being shorted. That means a significant chunk of sophisticated money is actively betting against the stock, expecting it to fall likely betting on those execution delays or challenges. But high short interest is a double-edged sword, isn't it? It absolutely is. If QuantumScape keeps delivering positive news like the Corning deal or hitting technical milestones, it can create fuel for a massive short squeeze. Where the short sellers are forced to buy back shares quickly, driving the price up even faster. Exactly. So it adds another layer of potential volatility here. Big swings are possible. Okay, so a split sentiment. Let's look at who actually holds the shares. Chapter 5, Ownership Structure. Who owns QuantumScape? Mm. Institutions hold a pretty big chunk, right? Around 33% to 36%. Yeah, significant institutional ownership. And importantly, that includes their strategic partner, Porsche Automobile, holding SE, the VW entity, holding a large stake, 15 to 20%. On big names like Vanguard, BlackRock are in there too. Yeah. Insiders own maybe 5.5% to 7.7%. Right. And that insider ownership figure leads us to what might be the single biggest red flag in this whole story. It's really quite stark. It's the relentless pattern of insider selling. Okay, tell us what the public filings, the SEC filings, are showing. So you look over the last six months or so, while the company is putting out optimistic press releases, talking up progress, the SEC filings show zero open market purchases by top executives. Zero buys on the open market it's by the people who know the company best. Zero. Let that sink in. Now, compare that to the selling side. Over the same period, we see 25 open market sales by top insiders. The chief technology officer, the chief financial officer, the chief legal officer, systematically selling off portions of their personal holdings. Okay, that, that does not look good. It raises a really critical question for any investor looking at this, doesn't it? It directly contradicts the public optimism. <laughs> if the future is truly so bright, if this is the next multi-bagger, the next Tesla, why are the insiders, the people with the most information, consistently reducing their own skin in the game? You can't just ignore that. It's a major disconnect between words and actions. It's a huge contradiction, and uh, you have to weigh that heavily. Absolutely. Okay, let's pull together the overall risk picture now. Chapter 6, Risk Assessment. So, summarizing the strengths. Potentially game-changing tech seems validated. They have an IP moat with patents, and that fortress balance sheet loads of cash. Right. Strengths are clear, but the weaknesses are equally glaring. Still pre-revenue, burning through cash rapidly. And the big one, mass production is totally unproven at scale and cost. Let's focus on the biggest external threats. What are the top two? I'd say number one, without a doubt, is execution risk. We keep coming back to it because it's everything. Scaling up that novel Cobra manufacturing process, getting it to churn out perfect ceramic separators reliably at high volume and at a cost that can compete with ever cheaper lithium ion batteries, that is an immense monumental engineering challenge. A slight delay could be catastrophic for the valuation. Easily. Even a six or 12 month delay in hitting mass production targets could significantly impact the financial models and investor confidence. The current price assumes smooth sailing. Okay, execution risk number one. What's number two? I'd point to geopolitical risk. Specifically, look at things like the 2025 U.S. anti-dumping tariff on Chinese graphite, 93.5%. But QuantumScape is anodeless. They don't use graphite in the anode. Correct. They don't use it there. But it signals a broader trend, a potential bifurcation of global supply chains, especially in critical tech like batteries, U.S. Europe versus China. While QS might benefit from made-in-USA incentives, it also means China might flood other global markets, say Europe or Asia, with heavily subsidized cheap batteries. Making it harder for QuantumScape to compete internationally. Potentially, yes. It could limit their total addressable market outside the U.S. or force them into specific regional partnerships. It adds complexity and cost risk to the global rollout. Okay. Execution and geopolitics. Big hurdles. Let's try to bring this all home. Chapter 7. Conclusion. 
Let's synthesize the bull case first. What's the argument for buying QS at $15.56? The bull case is pure vision. It's betting on revolutionary, validated, solid-state tech changing the EV game. It's trusting the validation from huge industry players like VW and now Corning, suggesting the tech is scalable. And it's relying on that huge cash pile to give them the time needed to cross the finish line and start reaping those high-margin licensing fees as the Intel inside for batteries. Okay, now the bear case. Why stay away or even short it? The bear case is grounded in pragmatism and risk assessment. It highlights the extreme execution risk in scaling that novel manufacturing. It's never been done before at this scale. It points to the current $9 billion valuation as pricing in near-perfect execution and rapid success, leaving no room for error. It notes the intense competition. Toyota, Samsung, others are all working on solid state too. QuantumScape isn't alone. And crucially, it points to that deeply concerning pattern of insider selling as a major red flag about management's own conviction. So, the final comparison. The market price today, $15.56. It's way above the average analyst target, around $6.30. Mm. And it's significantly higher than our own speculative, high-risk, intrinsic value estimate of maybe $7 to $10. Exactly. Buying QuantumScape shares today means you are paying a very substantial premium. It's fundamentally a bet on flawless execution of an incredibly difficult manufacturing scale-up. And it means you're choosing to believe the public narrative and the undeniable promise of the technology over the cautionary signal sent by the consistent insider selling. It's a high-stakes bet on innovation versus execution. Absolutely. And maybe here's the final thought to leave you with, the thing to really chew on. The core technical challenge, it seems solved, at least in the lab. The battery cell works. The prototypes show promise. The real multi-billion dollar town is, can the Cobra process mass produce that perfect thin ceramic separator cheaply enough and fast enough to actually beat conventional lithium ion batteries, which themselves are constantly improving, getting cheaper and better every year? Right. Can they hit cost parity and volume targets before the window closes? Precisely. What happens to that $9 billion market cap if the mass production ramp is delayed by just 12, maybe 18 months? What if costs are higher than projected? That's the core risk baked into that $15.56 price tag today. That's what you need to consider. A very sharp point to end on. Thank you for joining us for this deep dive into QuantumScape, a complex and fascinating story. We really appreciate you exploring these complicated topics with us. Uh, please do like and subscribe to the StockAnalytics.ai YouTube channel. Remember, members can add stock suggestions for future videos right there in the comments, and uh, we'll definitely pick them up. We're aiming to cover all the S&P 500 stocks over the next few months, and members get that exclusive priority access. And hey, if you just want a one-off deep dive on a specific ticker, just drop us a super thanks. We appreciate the support. And just the necessary reminder, this analysis was generated by an AI system. It's purely for educational purposes and absolutely should not be considered financial advice. Please always conduct your own thorough research or consult with a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Wise words. We'll catch you on the next deep dive.